When will we be recording again? <laughs> Seven C's. <laughs> Pirates like for me. Greetings and welcome to That Works, a DreamWorks podcast starring a happily unemployed photographer barely getting by with DoorDash, a disgruntled ex-journalist now writing Scott Pilgrim fan fiction, and a spineless asthmatic 26-year-old curmudgeon sweeping movie theaters for a living. Now, as you may know, this is the a podcast where we get to look at 20-year-old animated movies, at least at the start, as we work our way through the DreamWorks catalog. Before we go any farther, I'd like to say there are spoilers. Not that you need spoilers for, again, 20-year-old kids' movies, but we want you to experience these movies and all their magic, whether they're on a repeated viewing or for the first time ever. Because this is this one that we're talking about today is one that a lot of people seem to have forgotten. A lot of people hadn't seen it. I hadn't seen yeah, it literally. until about a year or two ago. So, and the movie is Sinbad, Legend of the Seven Seas, the final traditionally animated DreamWorks feature film. Came out in 2003. Not box office success really at all. It made made its budget back, but about it basically was the, the last of its kind. And uh, without further ado, this away. is Sinbad, Legend of the Seven Seas. <clears throat> After the Book of Peace is stolen by the evil goddess Eris, Sinbad must sail to the end of the earth to retrieve <coughs> the book, clear his name, and save the life of his childhood friend Proteus, who is in prison in Sinbad's stead. Along the way, Sinbad and his crew are joined by Proteus's fiance, Marie. Watch the start. Oh, I'll start away. I will say, I like the ending. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start at the end because I think that's the most redeemable part of it. I like the ending. It kind of subverted my expectations. No, it's a popular thing now. Everyone wants to subvert expectations. <laughs> subvert expectations, maybe a little too much. But this movie did it okay. Throughout the middle, it was kind of forgettable for me. I did like the creativity behind the animated monsters. Some of them were interesting. And some of them were pretty weird looking. But, all in all, I did have a good time, even though I thought it was forgettable. That's where I'm sitting at right now. Jake, how about you? Oh no, please. I like this better than you guys. You go first. I ain't got a mouthful of Jesus. <laughs> sponsor us. Hey, not sponsored. Yet. <laughs> oh, rated PG! There it is! Get it in! You got it in. <laughs> Hold on, I haven't reviewed. He has to go over so, his notes. Being one of the first movies that we watched in this challenge, it's been a while since I've seen it. I am realizing how forgettable it actually is, in that I can't remember much of it. I can remember characters. I really like Brad Pitt. I can remember the villain and how she reminded me of. Um, Kind of a Hercules, Little Mermaid I was like, just crossover. Just give me Meg vibes. Yeah. 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 Um, I can remember how it ends. But what goes on in the middle is just kind of a big it's, jumbly ball of haze. It's a quest. It is a quest. Where did they go? There's snow someplace they go when they <laughs> go down a hill in a sled. But I would say for good... Uh, for good things, I, I really like Brad Pitt's um, voice acting. He's, yeah. he's fun. Um, he's always been fun. I would say, now, because I have never read uh, Treasure Island, when I watched Treasure Planet, this is more of what I expected Treasure Planet to be. Gotcha. More of an adventure flick more than the sci-fi aspect they add to it. It was more like an adventure flick with sci-fi bits thrown in than what I felt like Treasure Planet was. Um, Keep in mind, he is less of a fan than I am. I don't know if you're a fan. You're a fan. I love Treasure Planet. Okay, so we oh, are the yeah. big... It's got to be the age thing with Treasure it, Planet, it might, too. Yeah. Because Treasure I've Planet been, comes out when we're like seven and eight. Well, <laughs> and yeah, and, and but 
was it 2002? I was yeah. a sophomore in high school. Yeah, I was going to so. say, that's the age difference. So, I liked it. I remember liking it, although I don't remember what really happened, like, play by play. <laughs> um, and with that, I'll throw it to you, Jer. So, I was the only one who had seen this before the challenge because I watched it, when was that, like, December of 2019? It was, on Hulu. it was on Hulu. And I was like, I've never seen this. It's, what is it, it's a 86 minutes. It. I'll sit down and watch this. I had a good time. I wasn't blown away that first time, but I really liked the ending. I was like, wow, this is a solid movie. And then when we rewatched this this time around, I remember sitting there and having fun because I don't have to pay attention to where is this going. You know, and yeah. I was like, this is good. The... The animation isn't mixing very well. The the Eldorado problems, like the barrel thing we made fun of, <laughs> it's there's a lot more of it, and it's not used in the best ways. Again, nothing yeah. against the animators, not at all, but just it's not blending as well, and and I think that's its biggest flaw. Because other than that, I have a ton of fun with this one. I I do know because I'm I unlike you pushing Spirit soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I don't think I'll push this as hard because I realize this is something. If you're not on board, ha! Right away, <laughs> it's it's kind of like okay, because it's a quest movie. A lot of kids' movies are quest movies, and when you start watching this, it's like okay, I get it. They're setting up the relationships and the plot. Now we're gonna go on the boat for the next hour, and then the last five ten minutes is gonna wrap it all up. Mm-hmm. And it's one of those things where I love those kind of movies because this gave me a lot of like Errol Flynn, Captain Blood vibes where the swashbuckling adventure especially the opening sequence is great it's and and that thing that's the thing about it it's probably forgettable if it's the first time you see it because i had forgotten parts of it too the second time around but that second time kind of solidified how much i like this because the opening sequence when the squid thing's attacking and it sets up sinbad and proteus's relationship like right away and it's Mm -hmm. like you they are enemies sinbad is a pirate proteus is is the prince but they set up that they are friends, that they had a childhood connection, and then you can tell they don't hate each other. They're not enemies fighting each other. Right, like, like yeah, it just they are fighting each other right away. But then once the squid attacks, they like join up just like the it, old days. Immediately, you're just be able to jump back. And, into it. and I do remember that first watch. I was like, "This is great. I like the chemistry between these two. The action is fun. Yeah, the animation is not, not aged well for the blending. Yeah, but just the, the creature looked pretty, pretty cool and." I was like, okay, movie, let's go. And then they throw Proteus in jail. Yes, yeah, like, oh, <laughs> And that's... I remember thinking, like, okay, makes sense. I kind of wanted him in the movie more because, and that's why, this is another one of those, I wish there was more of a franchise because you could flesh out these characters more in other mediums. You know, that's a TV show I, because Proteus and him had such a great chemistry, but they're only on screen together for like five minutes. That is true. I would have been interested to see, like, a spinoff or, like, a backstory onto that. And um, I do want to also mention that I did think, like, the 2D anime, like, in the very beginning, like, like with, like, the stars and the mystical, and you had um, Ares, like, up there giving her plan and all that. That that looked cool to me. Yeah. I thought that was really creative, and I kind of like the way they made the monsters look while they were in the sky. It's kind of like what you're saying when they, when they bring them down to Earth and yeah. try to make it. It was like, it's creative. I give them props for that. It's creative. But it just didn't work from times for me. Again, if you're not, if it's not your thing, and you're not jumping on board right Again? away, it's it's not really a slog. It's just kind of okay, because again, most of these are short. Oh so yeah, if you're not if you're if you're not into it right away, I get it. Like, but at least you don't have to go through a super long movie. This isn't a two and a half hour movie where mm-hmm. we have to explain all the pirate laws. And then have this giant battle that everyone tells me is so good, and then I try to tell them that World's End is not very good, but <laughs> that's a different yeah. discussion. Yeah. Although they both had giant uh, Krakens? There wasn't there a big Kraken in this? Yeah, the second one. The second part to the... Oh, the sorry, yeah, so yeah, I was mixing Yeah, he's dead in the third one. Right, 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 right. They had to kill him, of course. But basically... <laughs> but I love these kind of... Because this does harken back to, like, 30s, 40s swashbuckler movies. Because, again, I said Captain Blood and those Arrow Flint adventure movies. Because I watched those growing up. And they're just fun. It's a good... Yeah. So that I think that's why I have that connection. Plus, again, when you rewatch it, you remember stuff better. Because I didn't remember a lot of it in the second. So I'll say there 
there's a forgettableness to it. That is definitely why, at least I don't remember. I mean, again, like when we started this challenge, like was that a month ish ish ago? So like, it's like three months ago. Three months ago at this point, like I remember four major points in it, and that's about it. <laughs> it was good. Again, because that was the first time that I saw it. Yeah, that that that's about right for me too. I remember the opening scene. I remember. Him talking to Dewa Eris. Yeah. Him talking to Eris below the sea in the mm-hmm. in the bubble. And I remember I remember the party that he goes to initially. The snow mountain. Going to the end of the earth when they have to rush the waterfall thing. I do kind of Oh yeah, when they go over the waterfall and it just keeps yeah, going. That was great. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I remember that. And then of course I think we had said like the ending, you're like, wow. Yeah, no. Good ending. I did appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. I, oh, I guess when I say it's forgettable, I don't really mean that it. I didn't like it. It's just that I don't remember It doesn't stick in your it. mind. Because when I bring up the stuff, you're like, oh, yeah, that was good. Oh, yeah. That was it, decent. It doesn't mm-hmm. stand out like something um, like, you know, like the Prince of Egypt. I mean, you know, oh, comparing it apples to oranges. But like something like, you know, Boss Baby. Uh, <laughs> I can remember everything about boss baby well that's for a different reason <laughs> but isn't that the point like i can i can still remember it though i mean i, I i've heard this f- phrase saying a lot of times any emotional response is still a emotional response and that still resonates more with people than just forgetful not forgetfulness but just yeah i and, 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 I, and I think when i end in end the movie with a hmm. well, okay I think it's a it's a greater sin than good lord what did I just watch <laughs> you want to have a response you want to feel something if you hate it or you love it it's the middle of the road that's like you're saying it's yeah, just yeah it's it's the bigger sin it's just like okay mm-hmm. that, that that was it that was a movie the yeah. ending is what i remembered cuz i didn't remember talking about it to someone who had seen it the first time i saw it like saying to them oh i watched sinbad and they're like oh what would you think and i go i had a fun time that ending is really good and they were like, yeah, that is, like, that's the thing that stood out to me, too, because he basically loses. Because I yeah. think both times watching him, like, that's really good. Like, he, like, in his heart, he was lying when I think he said, yes, he would save his friends instead of himself. Yeah. And he was lying, and they're like, nope, oh, that's it, you lost. I go, what? And I'm, like, waiting, like, how movies are like, okay. What, what's oh, it gonna happen? It's like where is where is the drop? Where is, where is it, everything? Where is the... Rug gets pulled out. You won. Mm-hmm. But then it's like it's like oh nothing's happening. It's not gonna. And then he has, and this is I think I found a lot of strong story moments and a lot of good endings tend to boil down to a character has to make a decision, mm-hmm. and that's what kind of makes the whole thing resonate because he could just run away and let his friend die just to get off. And instead, he goes back. And he comes back for him. He's like, and he, it's got to be, not only is this his friend, but he got to feel some guilt I mean, about never owning he, up to anything before. Exactly. And, like, he literally risked his life for Oh, they were straight up to kill like, him. They were, he literally was just like, all right, if you don't go, well, I guess I'm just going to die. Like, he That's, literally got in the way. It's like, no, it's like, if he goes back, he, cl- he clears his name, Bring he didn't bring the book back, but he... Saves his friend. Hasn't really clear his name. Sorry, he clears his friend's name. Brody's name, Mm -hmm. and they're gonna kill him. So he can easily not go back, and he does. And they're about to kill him. And I'm sitting there the first time, like, "There's no way." Swing that sword. I'm like, "There's." And then it disappears, and Eris goes like, "No!" And I go, "Like, I'm like, oh, is this a? Is this kind of a day six mocking the thing?" And I go, "No, it's not. It makes perfect sense." Yeah, of course she's gonna do that. She's like, "No, this is not supposed to happen. You're not supposed to go back." I go, this is good. This is that's really good. It's kind and of he, and he gets it back for making the right decision, mm-hmm. not for saying something like if he would have said yes, I would have gone back. And because he's lying, because he knows he wouldn't. But then he, you know, that's the he's, subversion. That's exactly, he yeah. owns up to it, and that's how they win. And I, was, I really like that. I, it's interesting you brought up the Deus Ex Machina. It's because like that's the exact thing I was going through my head. I'm like, is that cheap? Is it an easy way to like fix everything? I'm like, no, um, no, no. He's earned it. 
it, yeah, and then I, eventually he's about to die. Yeah, he actually, yeah, and, and, and there's something in the gr- the agreement. Yeah, if he does this, the book goes back. It literally is just, and they don't even like, and it's one of those ex- rare examples of a kids' movie where they don't really defeat the villain. Yeah, and I think it's because they wanted to leave it open ended for more. I think there's a short that accompanies this that I've not seen. Really, but that's it <laughs> because again, it didn't do that well worldwide. No. Didn't even crack a hundred mil. This is the end yeah. of the you know the four traditionally animated movies. I remember watching this part of the challenge. What's I'm just checking. Yeah, so you have Shrek two next, huge hit. So it's like yeah, this is kind of the end of that early era because now we're starting to get into like us getting out of like elementary school and into middle school, mm-hmm. and then you're uh. high school getting into college. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like now it's starting to be more clear when and where I watch these. Whereas the early the early ones are like it's oh, just like you knew, kid. but yeah, you're just a little kid. So I just both times watching that ending, I was just like. This is really good. Yeah, that's fair. And I really like the crew. It, I really do. Yeah. Like, this works so well in TV format. It would. And it's interesting that you didn't bring up, we were talking about just Bells for a second, is because I did think, now that I'm thinking about it, they did do a good amount of world building. Oh, yeah. Like, they and really... And all those monsters, too, that we never saw. Exactly. Like, you're... I didn't even think about that. They really were trying to set up for more movies. At least without, without this, it feeling cheap. Without it feeling cheap. Yeah. They just like it kind of hinted they like subtly show like, oh, there's more to this. Like there's like different places to visit. There's different monsters. And man, that actually would have been interesting if I could have seen a like a sequel yeah. to this or it was just a spin-off or something. And the like chemistry, that. I mentioned the chemistry with Proteus and Sinbad. Sinbad and Marina's chemistry is great. It is. So whenever they'd fight that was so funny because <laughs> they're just, they're both really stubborn. And the whole, one of the cruxes of this character is he's sexist. Yeah. But it's not in an <laughs> unredemptive way. It's you see the progression and he, she, she basically shows, hey, I, I can do this. She, yeah, he literally, and she's she a valuable member of the crew. She's funny. Everyone's funny. That is true. I just, they I had a great, great time. Just great characters. Like, remember what we said about DreamWorks, just has great characters. Yeah. Early on, at least. Early on, they really probably get to focus. some of these later ones, and it's a little more cookie cutter, a little more what is just the norm because they're going for at the end of the day, they're trying to make money. Yeah, but it's just what it comes early to on, I man, will, they have great characters. I will say that DreamWorks in these first seven, seven, seven they really seven, swung seven. for the fences with star power. They that really is true. Do. This is one heck of a cast. You got Brad Pitt, Catherine his own Catherine. Catherine Zeta Jones. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. <laughs> Michelle Pfeiffer, Joseph Fine, and then you got the All State guy. Yeah, State exactly. <laughs> so just yeah, I'm just looking at the names of like, oh yeah, the rat, the what's that? What are the, what are the guys up at the crow's nest called again? I forgot. <laughs> Oh, I know my, you're my talking ship about and pirate this. lingo isn't very good. Well, look, it's the lookout. Is it lookout? Whatever, like whatever he is, like he was a fun character. Kale was a fun character. Just, I do remember laughing pretty hard when they're going into the party and they um, taking out all the weapons, taking out all the weapons. Yeah. But by the time, like when he's leaving, then it cuts back and the dude takes out his last weapon and goes, it's like, all right." <laughs> oh. <laughs> I forgot about I forgot about that until you just said that was a good scene. And they, that and they use that scene because they go to there to get food. Because like, let's go get food. Because aren't you sick of pickles and eggs? And I'm like, why would they say that specifically? And then later they make it a joke because they literally yell pickles and eggs instead of saying something else. I don't remember that. That, that was, is really funny though. It up, it's I remember I remember sat there this time I go. The only reason they only have pickles and eggs is for this joke, and I am all for it. There's another, there's a joke like this for Shrek 2 that we'll get into in the next episode that I'm like, they literally made they this just, creative decision they, they to s- tell this one joke, and man, was that a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> you probably know what I'm talking about. Yeah, a little bit. Um, yeah, but that, I just, <laughs> I just had a great time with this one, I Again, a rewatch is what solidified that how much fair. I like. Because the I first will... time I was like, this is good, this is decent. The second time around, I'm like, what, I can just sit back and enjoy it, knowing the ending's good, remembering I like the characters, and just being along for the ride. Yeah. 
It's a fun time. Maybe I should try to give it a rewatch then, so I can kind yeah, of just short. try. It. It's it is short, yeah. And just to enjoy it. These are short. That is true. Like, I will, yeah, I will give that to DreamWorks. I appreciate the well, short running time. Even even the bad ones are still rewatchable because it's just like a, not even an afternoon. Exactly. I mean, that's what they're really designing it for the parents that had to bring their kids. They're just like, okay, we're gonna make them sit through this. This won't be for that long. <laughs> you guys, as soon as it gets off and go get food and whatever. But all we just need is just a quick 86 minutes just to get your money. <laughs> that is definitely... But you you were saying something about the um, them swinging for the fences in their first seven. That is very true. They really like... Every single one of the movies has just this... And it was a, it's a particular it's very, genre, too. Yeah, it's like, very... It's a, they all feel like their own separate thing. Yeah. They all feel like their own separate thing, but they all have... They're so different. There's variety. A massive cast, though. That's true. Like, Which they do have pretty big casts later on, too. If anything, they might have bigger casts later on. This is a pretty... It's a good cast. It's a decent side, but... You have the top three or four names. Then after that, it drops off. Yeah. But then you look at... What was it? What did we look at? The last... It was like Shrek the Third. <laughs> yeah. look, I was looking at the list. It's like this giant Justin list. Timberlake. It's that's like just, Seth Rogen is, everybody is under the sun. in it for one scene. Yeah. And it doesn't even sound like him. If Wait, you don't know Seth the... Rogen egg and... No. That's Zach Galifianakis. Ah, uh, okay. Track the third, he's the ship captain of Seth Rogen. I don't know. Like, like okay, I put it on there and it's half the page of the voice <laughs> cast. Like... But they are, but the point is, those early on ones, it's, we need to make money, but we need to appeal to both. And I feel like as this goes on, they start to appeal more to one demographic to make money. Because that's, I mean, we flip one page. Look at that box office. Oh, yeah. It's just almost a billion worldwide. Oh, and yeah. Just, that's huge. I mean, we'll get into that. I remember it coming out and seeing it in theaters. Like, you were in, you were in high school in 2004, weren't you? Yeah, I was. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, you remember how big that was. You remember how big the first one was, as we said. So, I don't remember seeing the second one in theaters. It's interesting. Hmm. I never saw it in theaters either. I was just a... A young whippersnapper. A young whippersnapper had the DVD. And we'll get into it later, but... It's, yeah, this, it's, Sinbad does feel like the end of an era. Like, besides, it is the end of an era for DreamWorks because mm -hmm. it is the last of its kind for the feature length. Yeah. But it does feel like, wow, it's things like, are starting to shift. We're getting our first sequel yeah, that, next. That is true, that, actually. Yeah, the, the first seven, start. there's been no sequels. It's all just been yep. new and original ideas. I think most of that is like DreamWorks, though. Like, there's not a whole ton of sequels, right? Oh, there's. I mean, there's I mean there's like you realize three, there's four Shreks. There were, there were well, four. Okay, so there's like five, three or five. Soon to be. Six. Soon to be. Because Puss in Boots is part of that. It's not yeah, a single, say, it's part of the like, franchise. There's only like four main franchises, right? Until this year. Until last year. Because it was Shrek. It was Shrek. How to Train Your Dragon. How to Train Dragon. Madagascar Kung Fu Panda. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Trolls is now a franchise. Yeah. That's true. Boss Baby is now a franchise. It has a show and then the sequel this year. Right. Spirit is a I franchise. I about to say Spirit is, yeah. So now there's more, but for a while there are four. Now we're at that seven. Yeah. So they're, they're starting to build on that. Because that's where the money is in franchises and sagas. Yep. Man, just imagine a world where we would have got a Sinbad franchise. Oh, I want to live in that world. <laughs> that oh, an El Dorado franchise? The Dorado oh, verse, as we said. You give me a Dorado. Oh, oh my God. What do we call what the if, Sinbad what, what verse? The Sin verse? That's bad. What, Ooh, if, yeah. what if Sinbad was a part of the Dorado verse? Ooh, I can see a crossover. Theory, I, I don't think no they idea. I don't think they are. I think there's a big gap. Yeah, there might be. Yeah, that, 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 that was the is, other thing that was hard for me to tell. Like the actual it like, was hard when? for me to tell what time frame I mean, or where it's I was. Definitely fantastical. Like I was able oh, yeah, to like, it, throw that but, out the but window. But so kinda is El Dorado though. True, but less that, so, but the only the only thing that I'll raise to that is El Dorado actually leaned more on like the Spanish conquistadors mm -hmm. and Sinbad didn't lean on anything of yeah. time. I think because it really Sinbad, was that just, might that's a fictional kingdom. It whereas yeah. El Dorado specifically Spain is really that is from. that is true. That is true. Yeah, it's, it was really able to just be its own thing and just try to be as creative yeah. as it wanted. To I be. remember thinking when they were in the city, I was like, 
Are they trying to go the route of Atlantis with it? Like, I don't yeah, know. I just was... remember being thrown off by the movie. That's fair. So, yeah. Sinbad, Legend of the Seven Seas. Anything else to say, guys, before we wrap this up? Uh, final words. Again, I'm not going to repeat myself too much, but other than the slightly forgettable middle, very, very creative. Enjoyed the world building. I enjoyed the ending. I thought it subverted expectations. So the forgettableness is still there, but when I'm bringing this stuff up, are you starting to go, oh, yeah. That's what oh, it yeah. is. That's what it oh, is. Oh, yeah, it's this you, is good. When you bring it up, I'm like, yeah, actually, I did have fun with that. Yeah, I actually did enjoy that. It's just, yeah, it's just it's not, not as... sticking. It's not sticking. Yeah. It's like very loose Velcro. Like, you really got to slap it on. Sorry, her level is probably spiked from that. <laughs> Any any final thoughts over there, Jake? I, I know it's, it's you haven't said much. It's not really, not really one of your more favorite ones. More of the eh ones. Yeah, that's. I ended the movie and I was okay. Yeah, that's. I mean, I, that's I, mean, one I of those, enjoyed it. One of those ones where you uh, end the movie like, all right. They can't all be a ten or a one, so. Definitely somewhere in the middle. Right. Um. I just honestly, I just don't remember a lot of it. I do wonder. If you guys rewatched it in the future at some point, if you'd be like, okay, yeah, I think I'm remembering this more now. Again, there's something to say about movies that you get more out of it every time you watch, but there's also a, if I don't get something out of it the first time. So I, I can understand, mm. again, that's why I love this movie, but I understand why a lot of people they just don't care. I get it. Again, it's, it's harking back to a genre that was popular almost 100 years ago, mostly. Yes. You kind of had that. Because this is, this is the same year as Curse of the Black Pearl. So it's not like pirates weren't a oh. thing that could <laughs> be popular in film. Pirates definitely did it better. Yeah. <laughs> I will say. Yeah, they're very different, though. Oh, very I, different. I don't think that they are very different. It's just if when you generalize it down to pirate adventure movies, yeah. you kind of can't. It's just... I think Pirates has more swag. That's what it feels like to me. We said swag in the podcast. That's it. Okay. The swag is a legitimate yep, yeah. word. I'm done. I should just have What's this. What's wrong with I swag? I should have this list hold on, down. Hold on, hold on. I have water. You don't have any more water. <laughs> I do. No. I do. It's not allowed. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Absolutely not. Put, put it down. Put Jake, the water. Put, put the water down, and no one gets hurt. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, don't, I, don't, I have the mud. You know how much work I put into this binder? I don't want you to get the binder wet. Don't get the binder wet, Jake. For the binder. For the binder. Thank okay, you. thank you. <laughs> and that was Sinbad, Legend of the Seven Seas, rated PG for stuff that includes mild sensuality. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. These ratings are hilarious. Um, Eris. Where was the... It's yeah, Eris. Yeah, it's Eris. It's Eris. It's 34 Eris. and whatnot. Stop. I'm surprised we no, have to see. we're no, not going to go okay. there. Yep. There are people online that are shipping Eris and Sinbad. I bet it. Betcha. Maybe other members of the movie. I have water in here. Binder. I don't care about your binder. <laughs> I care about my binder. <laughs> okay. Next week. <laughs> next week. A better note. Another Rule 32 movie. Shrek 2. <laughs> 32. 34. Shrek 2. Big hit. Everyone. Everyone. You know. Another Shrek movie. This is one I know all three of us like like a lot more than the first one. We'll get into that next time, but for but for now, this is That Works, a DreamWorks podcast, signing off. We'll see you next time. Yeah.